There is no such thing as a surefire hit. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies with all-star casts that still bombed. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at films packed with A-list celebrities that failed to recoup their budget at the box office. Since we're just looking at the commercial side of things today, critical duds but financially successful bombs like Movie 43 will not be included. Also, not every listed film is terrible. Actually, some of these entries are pretty great, even if they couldn't find a paying audience. My first wife Jacqueline and I spent our honeymoon here. Things are pretty different now. Number 10, Aloha. She's got a wicked hula. With a filmography that includes Almost Famous and Jerry Maguire, writer-director Cameron Crowe knows a thing or two about all-star casts and witty banter. Featuring an impressive cast that includes Bradley Cooper, Emma Stone, and Bill Murray, Aloha should have been a done deal for the experienced director. Unfortunately, Crow's Hawaiian comedy received scathing reviews and failed to bring in a crowd. No, 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 you've got this all wrong. I didn't come here to argue. A couple of months prior to its release, a leak revealed that the film tested poorly at early screenings, so the film's failure was only a matter of time. Excuse you. Stop it! Who else knows? Number 9, Shadows and Fog. Well, be careful. I'd hate for them to find you in an alley with your throat slit from ear to ear. Don't worry about that, he, he mostly strangles. Based on a 1975 play written by Woody Allen, Shadows and Fog marks a commercial low point in the filmmaker's storied career. I've got to be up early tomorrow for work, Don't so Don't play so dumb. Need... Paying homage to German expressionist cinema and novelist Franz Kafka, Shadows and Fog is a comedy, stylistically presented in black and white, and starring Allen, Kathy Bates, John Malkovich, Mia Farrow, and many other recognizable faces. Don't lecture me, Kleinman! Are you with us or against us? While critics mostly showed indifference to Allen's film, Shadows and Fog recouped less than $3 million of its $14 million budget, which included the construction of one of New York's largest film sets and became his last film released by the production company Orion Pictures. You take care of yourself. Me too. Thank you. Number 8. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou Is it true that this is going to be your last voyage? Wow. Beloved indie director Wes Anderson regularly delivers the goods, but this Bill Murray-led slice of quirkiness was a hard sell. Let me tell you about my boat. Covering similar themes as Anderson's The Royal Tenenbaums, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou is one of the filmmaker's most expensive films to date, but critics and audiences seemed unsure of how to react to Murray and Jeff Goldblum's deadpan shark hunting adventure. Normally we would track the jaguar shark with the scanning monitor we keep on board the Belafonte. In the years since the film's initial release, The Life Aquatic has amassed a cult following. But the film's terrible box office return established Anderson's undersea adventure as a massive financial flop as far as mainstream audiences are concerned. The Zisu of my childhood represents all the dreams I've come to regret. What? Number seven, Town and Country. <gasps> Stop! No! Oh, wait! Uh, When it comes to cinema, massive reshoots are always a positive sign. Wait, that doesn't sound right. A notorious flop, Town & Country wasted a fantastic cast on a tired romantic comedy about cheating husbands, of the filthy rich variety. With a production budget exceeding $80 million, Town & Country spent two years in development hell, with the script going through multiple rewrites. How'd you find that out? Recouping a little more than $10 million at the box office, a cast filled with legends like Warren Beatty, Charlton Heston, Diane Keaton, and Goldie Hawn could not save Town & Country from its disastrous fate. <laughs> Number 6. Heaven's Gate From an Oscar winner to an infamous flop, it only took director Michael Cimino two years to squander any goodwill he'd earned from 1978's The Deer Hunter. Quadrupling the original budget, Heaven's Gate's production was marred by allegations of animal abuse, a bloated runtime, and Cimino's overbearing directorial style. As a result, Heaven's Gate was met with underwhelming reviews and an even worse return on investment, prompting Cimino to release a shorter edited version that also flopped. 
in the end, Cimino's attempt at making a western very nearly bankrupted United Artists, the iconic production company founded by Charlie Chaplin, among others. You thought you were his friend. I'm not responsible. Number five, nine. Le spectacle est tout fait découvert. Hey, pas trop cher. In Daniel Day-Lewis We Trust, but even the method acting king has tasted box office poison. Don't look at me like that. An adaptation of a Broadway musical based on Federico Fellini's autobiographical film Eight and a Half, Nine surrounded Day-Lewis with an array of A-list actresses, including an Oscar-nominated turn by Penelope Cruz. Despite the film's capable and charismatic cast, Nine failed to impress critics or recapture the lucrative magic of Moulin Rouge or Chicago. With a production budget of $80 million, the musical's box office haul came to less than $55 million worldwide. Making movies wasn't your problem. You were the problem. Number four, Winter's Tale. Beverly! No! Based on a Mark Halperin novel, this adaptation was originally offered to Martin Scorsese, but the director considered the story to be unfilmable. It should have been assigned. From Colin Farrell to Will Smith, Winter's Tale hardly lacked for likable cast members, but the nonsensical plot and bland characters dragged down the entire experience. Well, well, well. At best, the period piece is good for laughs from Russell Crowe's hammy performance, but the draw of a ham-fisted kiwi wasn't enough to come anywhere near earning back its $75 million budget. <sighs> Number 3. Death to Smoochie Does that say Nora's Magic Jungle? I don't think so, so don't talk to me like that because I am not your puppet. Since when? Now get your spongy pink ass out there and dance for the cameras. Going against type, this quirky black comedy sees Robin Williams' butt nugget of a clown trying to ruin the career of Edward Norton's naive TV show host. Where can you go when skies turn gray, where the sun always shines and the animals play, where every day is a happy day, well Smoochie's here to show the way. Directed by Danny DeVito, Death to Smoochie tried to be Matilda for adults, but received generally unfavorable reviews, including a particularly negative one from Roger Ebert. Recouping less than one-fifth of the production budget, Death to Smoochie marks DeVito's biggest box office blunder to date, and earned Robin Williams a Worst Supporting Actor Razzie nomination for the comedian's performance as Randolph Smiley. May I have some place for a smile? Hmm. <laughs> a boy! Number 2. Hamlet Oh, Hamlet. What a falling off was there. Directed by and starring Kenneth Branagh, this faithful adaptation of Shakespeare's play was released completely unabridged to theaters. Clocking in at over four hours, Branagh's Hamlet ranks among the very best Shakespearean movies and earned multiple Academy Award nominations. In spite of a glistening supporting cast consisting of Billy Crystal, Jack Lemmon, Robin Williams, and Kate Winslet, the film's extensive runtime disheartened audiences from turning up. Oh, the vile king! However, Columbia Pictures' decision to ignore the foreign market almost entirely and to screen Hamlet at less than 100 cinemas in the United States hardly helped matters. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. When did you stop supporting art? I support your art, but that does not mean that I must support your revolution. The price of talent. Hungry? Always. I have any stuff. Whose tape is this? The tape is mine. Well, see if your honor, please. Mr. Kramer, shut up. Mr. McCoy, I remind you that you are still under oath. Number one, all the king's men. Yeah, they responsible, all right, to alter power and all companies and the rest of them thieves. I wouldn't know about that. Oh, when Oscar bait goes hilariously wrong. Based on Robert Penn Warren's novel, itself a Pulitzer Prize winner, All the King's Men is a modern parable about an everyman politician who slowly turns into a monster. 111 new bridges, 208 new schools, 60,000 brand new jobs! Led by Sean Penn and Jude Law, the adaptation's mouth-watering lineup proved to be more of a curse than a blessing, as critics found the film to be woefully miscast. Is it? Yes, it is. 
largely detested by reviewers and ignored by audiences. All the King's Men opened with a measly $3.8 million and ultimately wasted most of its $55 million budget. There's always a price for everything we do. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.